My earliest musical memory involves Now That's What I Call Music, those compilation CDs that brought together all the pop hits of the day. Through these CDs, I really grew to hate Taylor Swift because my older sister decided that she really liked her, so that meant that hers were the only songs I heard for months on end. But it was here that I discovered and fell in love with the band for the first time when I was six years old, and that band was Fall Out Boy. Those CDs have had a lasting impact on me, although some things have changed. I love Taylor Swift now, and I'm still a big fan of Fall Out Boy, but nowadays I'm a lot more conscious of the misogyny in their early songs. It almost feels futile to take issue with those lyrics in particular. To paraphrase Jessica Hopper, if I have a problem with the more benign misogyny of Fall Out Boy, then I must have a problem with all of music history. And maybe I do, but now what? Repeated exclusion from and derision in music and media can imply that women don't belong in these spaces. Luckily, I've had the privilege of speaking to some of the amazing wahine who have worked at RDU over the years. I wanted to find out if they had similar struggles and also pick their brains about their experiences in broadcasting. It was a pleasure to bring them all together in this one project. I first got into broadcasting many, many years ago. I grew up listening to my dad do um, student radio when I was really small down at um, Radio 1 in Dunedin. Other than that, I think I went to a Sheep Technique show with my friend Brian uh, and at that point RDU was operating out of the truck. I was first interested in broadcasting because of journalism. Um, I never actually thought I'd do radio. Someone last year at RDU just offered a slot to me and I thought why not take it? Like I love music and it's a good break from doing news. So my high school was Linwood College and it had opportunities for broadcasting into the quad and I remember I did that when I got to uni. I remember, yeah, desperately wanting to do RDU but I was too shy or I don't know, I just didn't have good self-esteem and the man was like, come on. I actually was at a radioactive pub quiz in Wellington with my friend Emily and the person who was running it was the programme director of um, radioactive at the time, Scott Nicholson, and he came up to us afterwards and he was like, hey, you want a show? And we were like, sure. And so we got a Tuesday Drive um, show just from being ourselves. And so broadcasting school in those days was like, you know, two or three hundred people would apply for 13 positions and you'd be in for three months and you'd set up a radio station and it would cost 60 bucks. But I was so in love with the studio and playing records and getting to choose which way they went. That I used to do like a Saturday afternoon show for like two or three hours and there was like a, a square dancing program and some other kind of fruity community thing. But there was like two hours that I could play whatever I wanted. When I first got started, the thing that I struggled the most with was anxiety that people would not take me seriously. The day before my very first show, I sat in class meticulously planning out what I was going to say on air and promptly deleted it all the second that I got into the recording booth, as I was struck with a crippling fear that nobody would care about what I had to say. It took me weeks to get over that anxiety and talk about what mattered to me. Yeah, I think, I think it helped that we knew a few people who yeah. were involved and we were sort of in that crowd or that scene by that stage. Yeah, we so involved. not really any barriers as such. Um, just yeah, our own, probably our own sort of Anxiety, confidence yeah. levels. Yeah. yeah, I would have to say my own self-esteem. Um, I didn't have any barriers to giving me opportunity. I had plenty of opportunities, but just my own anxiety and feelings of, am I good enough to do this? Just relaxing and trusting myself and being confident in like the random shit that comes out of my mouth sometimes. I was definitely um, too old and too married and too much of a mum and you know and all of those things. Confidence issues. Confidence is the biggest, most frightening thing as, a, as someone who's beginning to broadcast. There is somewhat of a sense of obligation I feel that I should be promoting women's issues and representing female artists. And a lot of the time this results in me being hyper aware of the misogyny that is often part and parcel with my favourite music. When I'm making my playlist for the show of the day and there aren't a lot of female artists, or when I realise that maybe I shouldn't be heaping praise upon a certain artist or song given its lyrical content, I often feel guilty. Since my pet interests include emo, new metal and Weezer, this is something that I run into a lot. Conversely, I have to wonder if I'm the only female broadcaster that feels this way, and also if this is something that ever occurs to men. 
It's great to be constantly aware of and feel like you have a moral responsibility to combat your own oppression, and this shouldn't solely be our cross to bear. It is pretty cis, hetero, white, male dominated, and I mean, that's just not singular to radio, that's just like across the board. I think like mainstream radio has, it just has, it just like has problems. It's like racist, sexist, homophobic. It's like New Zealand culture, it's the worst kind of bottom of the barrel kind of sort of anti stuff. Through speculation and especially when you look at mainstream radio and their hosts and yeah the lack of women or the even in like when you have like the three hosts and there's there's more men than women um, and definitely a lack of um, I think like queer and non-binary representation. Just in the back of your mind as a female broadcaster in the industry you're always having to fight that sort of that worry that they think you are approaching them for anything outside of a professional interest yeah. or a fan. If I was a male, I would just go up and do this because there'd be no um, ulterior motive that they think I have. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's, it's just something that you always think of, even these days, if I contact a male musician. You know, it's just... But you still always have that in the back of your mind. Yeah, yeah. As a female broadcaster, you just don't know are they coming on the show for, for genuine reasons or something else? Yeah, we've got a lot of women, but what roles are they in? They're not in the CEO roles, they're not in the high profile, they're not the station managers, they're not the program directors, they're not necessarily in the spaces that we would expect them to be if things are equal. There's an old adage that you can't be what you don't see, and this was especially true in my case. My favourite music writers and broadcasters happen to be men. But even as I engaged with their work and first became aware of RDU when I was 14, it wasn't until I was 17 that I realised that becoming a broadcaster was something that I can and should do after seeing that the Tiahe Top 10 hosts were also young women still in high school. Sometimes it takes seeing people like yourself in these spaces that really makes everything click into place. I absolutely feel like I need to represent women. Not necessarily because I'm a broadcaster, but because I am part of a community. I don't go into the studio every Tuesday going like, right, like I've got to represent women today. I just, I feel equal in, at RDU, like in my environment anyway. I mean, I can't represent all women. I can do my bit. I can uh, create spaces for other people. I try to, um, and I can do what I can. I'm not singularly going to solve the problem. The, just the very fact that I exist still, which, which isn't an anomaly because, you know, to have been like a fully paid professional kind of person consistently over the years, I would have had to not live here, right? I have kind of seen it as like a way of kicking down the door and keeping that door open. It's been really important. Um, that visibility is actually, is hugely significant. And you see it in um, wider media, in, in broader media, in like TV shows and in kind of representation. Representation does actually really matter. Thankfully, women have had a consistent and effective presence at IDU and serve as an example of what we can be. But the work doesn't begin and end there. Without confronting and combating pervasive cultural attitudes and working to confront biases, women cannot be on an equal playing field. You know women are always thinking about, am I going to get raped, am I going to get killed? Like, that is in our mind every day. I remember being, when I lived in Auckland, I did a BFM show, which was also like a, a late night show, and you know, this guy would call me and text and repetitively, and I'd be like, is he gonna be out there when I come out of the studio? Like, women have to think about that all the time and it's not fair. Just not even looking someone in the eye to talk to them, you know, that can have a really huge impact. And if you're already feeling like you're on the back foot and you're entering a, an industry which is male dominated or has been, you know, there's a little bit of Fear. There's a little bit of unsure, uh, you know, uncertainty. Making it known that there are opportunities. It was a woman who offered me the slot at RDU. Like if she hadn't offered it to me, I never would have really thought about it or like pushed myself far enough to do it. Representation. Just making those spaces for those people. Yeah, when I see someone like myself, I'm like, I can do it. 
Yeah, when you see people in those positions and give them encouragement, then it goes a long way. I have a lot of faith because I see things that other women are doing and intergenerationally that is making it just much easier. One person gets in, brings the next person in, another person gets in, you know, it's just, it's that having that space. What could be done to welcome a woman into radio or music? Equal pay. <laughs> um, Acknowledgement of the work put in. Being mindful and proactive of small things. I think the best thing you can do is find people and create a community. It's understanding that all that all aspects of all creative endeavours require you to be flexible and just show up. Um, to just do it and to try it because if it's not your thing, that's totally okay. Find the thing that sparks you and turn it into your show, you know, turn it into your passion and just run with it. I would like to think that Wahine will continue to make waves and bust through glass ceilings across the musical and media landscape and that these changes will be welcomed and supported by everyone. Of course, such change doesn't occur spontaneously and it certainly won't occur independently. We must continue making our art and taking up space in media, at gigs and on stage. We need to lead by example, welcoming more women into these arenas that exclude us. Of course, it's easy to say all that. It's less clear what that looks like and the effect it will have. And of course, nothing can be accomplished without the solidarity of the men who also partake in these activities. So as for what the future holds, that remains to be seen. I know that we can and I'm confident that we will do better.